Hi, my name is Paweł Spechalski and in one of my recent videos I stated that this shot as a ESC protocol sometimes suck and it can be easily affected by the length of the cables or poor soldering or lack of mass or any other multiple factors that actually electrical, mechanical factors that can cause ESC driven by the D-Shot protocol knock out of the sky, falling down and stuff like that. Some of you believed me because uh, I can be pretty convincing. Some of you said, no, 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 it's surely enough driver fault and show us the proof and stuff like that. So um, I decided that I will kind of show you some stuff. Why? Because I got me an oscilloscope. I got me a scope and entry level professional, not really professional, but let's say really like decent oscilloscope with a decent bandwidth sampling rate and stuff like that. So I will be showing you some things about the, the signals we are having and in this video I will show you what's the difference between PWM one shot 125 multi-shot and the D-shot protocol and why they are slightly slightly different and why that might be a problem. Let's begin with the standard PWM protocol. PWM protocol that we were using years ago and we are still using, for example, for the servos is something very, very simple. Uh, it encodes the value, in our case, from the range of the 0 to 100% throttle or servo position as a length of the pulse. The on one point of the histor, the time, the voltage level goes from 0 to 1 to let's say 5 volt 3.3 volts and then it stays for a selected period of time and then it falls down the difference between the raising edge and the falling edge the time difference defines as the value encoded in case of the standard pwn protocol it's between 1000 uh, milli Micro, no, 1000 microseconds to 2000 microseconds and the maximum rate, how much this protocol can be refreshed is around 490 hertz but practically it's only 400 hertz so it's not very very efficient and very not very fast of with transferring the information from the from the flight controller to the um, ESC because the update cannot happen very often and it takes relatively long time because let's be honest two milliseconds in current uh, mini quad world is really a lot of time so this is how it works but the standard pwm mm, is very robust it's really like hard to break it it works all the time it's, it's it's there it's there it's there it's there and we are still using this because for example for a servo it makes no sense to have faster protocols because servos are just slow by the by, by the general idea by the design of the server at least the servos we are using in our hobby because everybody knew that the standard pwm protocol was too slow a few years ago they've built something called one shot 125 what's the difference between standard pwm and one shot 125 it's it's eight times faster why because instead of encoding the signal with the length of the of the pulse from 1000 microseconds to 2000 microseconds it does exactly the same by encoding this with the time difference between uh, 125 microseconds to 250 microseconds so zero throttle is 125 microseconds hence the name and 100 percent throttle is the 250 microseconds it's more or less eight times faster and can be refreshed eight times as often as the standard pwm but still 250 microseconds plus uh, signal has to go to zero for some time so let's say 400 hertz 400 microseconds not very fast not very not very fast we might get better than this so what happened next? Multi-shot. What's the multi-shot? It's exactly the same. Multi-shot is exactly the same, but instead of using 1000 to 2000 on 125 to 250, it uses from 5 microseconds to 25 microseconds. When 5 microseconds pulse length is the zero throttle and 25 microseconds is 100% throttle. Makes sense? Makes sense. Of course, 
because we are making the pulses shorter, it's harder and to measure exactly measure the length of the of the pulse. Imagine you have a flight a MCU, a CPU that can measure with the uh, time with the accuracy of let's say one microsecond. Uh, it was true, for example, for older Arduinos. Arduinos? Yes, for the Arduinos. So, in case of the PWM, no problem. You have more or less thousand steps, so you can really like very precisely measure the length of the signal. For the multi-shot, to measure from 5 to 25 with the resolution of 1, it gives you really 20 steps. Not very good. Luckily, luckily, modern microcontrollers, STMs, are much faster than the old Arduinos or at Mega, and this is not really a big problem for them to relatively accurately measure the length of the pulse, even for something as short as 5 to 25 microseconds of the multi-shot. It works more or less just fine. Sure, the faster the an analog protocol, it's easier to make a mistake while measuring the length of the pulse, but even with, let's say, I don't know, 50, 60 steps, you will not know the difference, really. And with 100 steps, not a chance to know the difference because the motors and propellers and stuff like that. But still, this is analog protocol. You cannot do much about this. You cannot really like send commands, uh, make it beep and uh, reverse it easily. It's complicated. So someone decided that it's a good idea to have a digital protocol to drive the ESCs. This is why the D-Shot was created. So, how the D-Shot works and why it's sometimes better than the analog one. It's digital. It's really the serial protocol and it encodes the value not as a length of the pulse of something, but as a series of zeros and ones sent over the line, which encodes the actual value. The D-Shot itself is 2 bytes, 16 bits, when there is 12 Yes, 12 bits for the throttle position, or 11. I don't remember, it's 10 to 12 bits for the throttle position, the 4 bits of the checksum, and the request for the telemetry and special commands. That means that the um, ESC knows which serial packet is corrupted and which one is okay because it's serial it does not rely on measuring some kind of the time of the pulse it's encoded with zeros and one 16 bits and you have the full packet and you can give commands you have some spare things to request to, for telemetry stuff and you can uh, really know if the packet was right there is a price though there is the price though because the D-Shot itself is uh, more demanding than the analog protocols. Um, I will show this to you in the next video. I will show you some really fancy, fancy, fancy things on the, <laughs> on, the, on the scope. But the problem is that even with the relatively slow D-Shot 150 requires 3 MHz timer frequency to generate the signal because we are not really for the D-Shot we are not really using the uh, serial ports on the CPUs we are only using the big banked bit banked approach when the timer puts zeros and ones and and uh, puts them away so this is problematic and when we go to the fastest D-Shot 1200 the frequency of the uh, timer itself it's let me check it it's 24 megahertz it's really bloody fast and with the frequencies like that we go into the um, ready rf range there are things like impedance that uh, has to be let's say taken into consideration they are there are really really things, bad things happening and you have to think how long is your line, how good is your line, maybe it should be shielded and stuff like that. But we will experiment with that on the, the next video. In general, if D-Shot works, D-Shot is actually better than the analog protocols because it gives you extra stuff, it gives you telemetry, it gives you commands and it's, it, it's rather not fluctuating because of some interference. But if there are 
negative things happening, like a lot of interference on the line, the dish might just stop working. I will show you what's happening on the line in the next video, like I said. And for now, this is all. Stay tuned, because it's going to be bloody interesting. I really, really, I have some interesting screenshot already from the scope, and I was really, really surprised that something like that was really happening on the line. Okay, that's all for today. Until the next one. Bye-bye.